In this video, I want to show how to deploy a Neo4j cluster to a managed Kubernetes environment. In the last video, I showed how to use and consume Neo4j from within a Quarkus application. And now we want to see a more sophisticated way how to run Neo in a Kubernetes environment. There is a Helm chart available um, on GitHub that you can use. And if you're not familiar with Helm, Helm is basically a package manager, or as I would say, a way to uh, write templated um, YAML resources. So to create somewhat like a template package for an application or for any workload uh, that you deploy to Kubernetes. We actually will have a brief look into this Helm chart here. And what it will do, it will create a cluster of per default three nodes that are backed by a stateful set um, on top of persistent volumes. So of course, Neo is a database, so we want to have this in a persistent way. And if we have a look into this Helm chart, I open it up in my IDE here, you will see that there are a bunch of YAML resources that are somewhat um, well equipped with some template, uh, template syntax. And this will be uh, created uh, here. I already have done that. Uh, we can also have a look into these values, a YAML. So there's a chart uh, YAML that describes this Helm chart and then some values that we can set. So these are basically um, the parameters um, available here. And for example, we see that we have three uh, number of servers uh, at its core backed by persistent volumes. And I already applied this to my cluster. What I do, I use a managed uh, Kubernetes cluster. This has the reasons that it will create um, all of these uh, storages for us. I used the IKS, the IBM Cloud Kubernetes service. So I have a cluster here uh, with, well, three um, workers, but actually that's not important. And uh, of course, that's a managed cluster and I can have a look into this. So for example, kube control get services or kube control get pods. And in this case, I already deployed this Helm chart. So how I did this, I create, well, at, um, the way how you do this is using a Helm template. Uh, so I create Helm template, um, well, this Helm chart with already some values being set. So I will um, agree for the license agreement. I use new in the enterprise version and I set a default password here and it will create these YAML resources in that file that we actually can have a look at. And so we see a bunch of things like uh, the service account here, secret, um, all of the stuff that has been created, a few config maps. And most importantly for us, in the middle, there is a bunch of services and there is a stateful set that actually creates the core instances of our new cluster. So three uh, per default, and they will just create, yes, this Neo4j version four, and they have a reference to persistent volumes here, actually. So we will have volume mount and most importantly, our data directory that will be created by volume claim templates here. So we will actually have persistent volumes. We can have a look into this. We see, okay, now we have our pods and we have kube control get persistent volume claims and kube control get persistent volumes. So here we see uh, the persistent volumes, one for each node um, for these core nodes here. So they are bound by this uh, claim. And we see that this also uh, has been created for us. So the only thing I did was I said kube control apply um, this file and then it will create uh, all of, of course, all of the Kubernetes resources. And because of this, um, volume uh, claim template, also these volumes that will be created by my uh, managed Kubernetes uh, instance, basically by the, the cloud service. So these are specific storage classes. There is a provider available for that in my cluster or in my platform, and that will create uh, these persistent volumes for us. So now that already worked and I could create um, um, this cluster and let's see whether it's up and running. Uh, so first of all, I can um, actually create uh, my application and then connect to it. Um, if you don't know how that uses it, have a look at the um, a recent video. Or what I will do, I just have a look into the cluster and then also uh, I want to apply some resources already. So what I can do actually, I can um, go 
and cube control exec to um, a core here. So for example, I say I just want to go there manually and um, that's uh, the equivalent of SSHing into a server. And then for example, see, okay, actually please go to the cipher shell and then use a username and password to connect to this. So I could say a uh, username is Neo4j and that's this um, default password that I set. And then I already see, okay, that's interesting. I can, for example, uh, go to use the system database and then uh, show all the databases that are um, available here. So um, in the different uh, roles, because I, I use this cluster and uh, so on and so forth. So that is already interesting, but now I want to, let's exit with a colon, and that's the other exit. Now I want to um, apply my uh, my script from the notes from the um, default uh, cipher script that I showed in the last video. And how I do this, I, I can actually go and say, I apply in my, um, for example, by cube control exec in my cipher shell, what is uh, the part of this uh, cipher script. So let's do this. I just specified a, a user password uh, in, or it's here because it's easier and it already create created some nodes. So notice I um, specified a single instance uh, dash zero, but since it's part of a cluster, it will be of course replicated uh, with um, all of the other uh, instances. So now I created that. I could go to the cluster and have a look into it like I just did um, with the exec command, but now I actually use a different one just to see that it actually works uh, in this cluster environment. I again go to my Cypher shell and log in, username, password. And then I see, okay, actually now please show me all of the labels that are available. And then I already see, although the, that was a different node uh, here, a different new node, but it's part of the cluster that now this has been created. And I can say, okay, great. Now I want to see um, the data that I um, created before. So for example, let's say, okay, match uh, all the nodes available and return this in my coffee beans and flavors and origins and so on. So that works now. All right, now if um, that if that works as expected, I can actually go and deploy my Quarkus application that uh, will connect to uh, to that same um, that same cluster. To, so to the cluster that is available. In order to understand what's going on, I have a look at the services that actually have been created. So there are a few services available. There is a graph database Neo4j service. That is the service I connect to when I want to connect to uh, my uh, Neo4j database from within the cluster. So these are these ports. There is also a replica one that I don't use for now. I don't have any replica nodes. These will be read only nodes um, that don't participate in a transaction just to scale out on the read uh, side. And there are some discovery services, actually one per, uh, per instance that is just used internally uh, from a new uh, for this cluster, well, discovery uh, inside the cluster. This is actually something I changed in the Helm chart um, because uh, originally they are of type load balancer, which here actually is not required. Uh, what a load balancer do, uh, does, it would create an external IP and potentially would be um, available from the outside. But here that doesn't make sense in my case. So um, I changed it to uh, um, just a, a cluster IP type like uh, all the other ones. And this is now being used from uh, within the cluster. But more importantly, this is the one I connect to from my application. I can have a look into this. So that's my uh, Quarkus project. I can have a look into this uh, deployment. And I do two things here in my deployment. I will specify course my container image with Quarkus and then I specify the Quarkus Neo4j URI. So remember in the Quarkus properties I could set this but I also can override it from an environment variable and this is what I set here in uh, in Kubernetes. I set this to graph database um, um, graphdb Neo4j to this host name that is actually the service name and also I use um, um, a password that is actually set in this um, secret. So here I just reuse the same secret that has been created by the Helm chart. I could of course use another one, but uh, the point is 
I will create this environment variable with the contents of the um, Neo4j password, here are the contents of the secret, in order to connect, of course. So I now actually apply this uh, service and deployment, and then what it will do, of course, it will create a service and then deployment that creates one pod uh, for us, for this coffee shop. And in this case, um, just for simplicity, I did not create any uh, ingress or gateway resources. So just uh, for the sake of testing, what I will do, I say, actually, I just po port forward to my coffee shop um, with port 8080. And that, of course, means that I can go uh, for curl localhost and then have a look into these coffee shop beans that you might remember if you watched the last uh, video. And in this case, then I will just output all of the data. And now this data has been created since I ran this cipher shell command. So I ran this first uh, command from within this directory, which actually just executed uh, this one, the test data here, that creates a bunch of uh, nodes in cipher um, cipher way to just say, okay, create all of these coffee beans and the things I um, explained previously. So now we can actually just display all of the coffee beans that are in the application or these special type of beans and so on and so forth. And it will display some different, um, different response here. So that is our Quarkus application that connects to the Neo4j cluster that now um, accesses everything that has been created from within that managed Kubernetes cluster. Thanks for watching.